Welcome to Big Bites with Caroline Collins. I'm serving up deep conversations with influential people. My hope is to leave you feeling inspired and motivated. Now let's dig in. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lexi Collins. <laughs> welcome to the Big Bites podcast and welcome Thank everyone you. to our segment. Thank called you for Who's having talking. Me. Who looks like the podcaster in this situation? I do. A hundred percent me. Tell me why my setup is way cooler than yours. <laughs> Tell me why I think it's okay to have lights in the background. I was. The- I wish we would have recorded us trying to set up for this podcast because literally you know, I like, Caroline, the backlighting. Caroline didn't know how to use a converter. Caroline, I'm like, DJ, really do the didn't. rescue. I know. I didn't know how to use this microphone. It was a disaster. Do I sound okay? You sound great. Do I sound okay? Yeah, and you look great. You look so cool. Oh, gosh. I don't even have on any makeup. You have on full TV makeup right now. Yeah, I just came literally. (laughs) It's Let's see. It is 1134 p.m. I just came from set, from the new set. Well, I'm like just did my foundation to go out tonight because we're on – total opposite schedules we are so Um, wait this is uh, you have a podcast now yeah I have a podcast Ah! now I don't even I don't even know like how this is recording I don't know what this is going to look like Like, we're next to each other on this recording is that like can I change that I mean there's so much that I just don't know yeah I feel like it should be horizontal but it's like vertical And it's kind of like we just have to roll with the punches first and kind of just deal with like – I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? Because if if I just keep trying to perfect this, there will be no podcast. (laughs) Because our podcast is never going to get done. You know what? One step at a time. I'm coming to Houston in a few days. We'll work on your setup. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even right now as we're talking, I'm like trying to adjust – yeah, I want an aesthetic, but I just I don't have one. I think I need maybe like a table, <laughs> a permanent table. Like I think I need something set up that just sits here and like the ring light and everything doesn't move and it's just like I just have to turn the lights on and go. Caroline, you know what you I mean? Have a full second bedroom. Why don't you make that into your podcast studio? Well, cuz I don't want the bed in the background. Get rid of the bed. I'll sleep on an no! air mattress. Where are you? Where are you, mom, gonna sleep when you come <laughs> on an air mattress? Well, ugh. okay. Anyway, I'm just proud of myself for doing this, and I'm also like, is this software that I'm using to record on this? It's like Zoom, but better. It's like made for podcasting. Is it just gonna record our faces? Because I have a lot going on on my screen right now. Caroline, you're not. It's not gonna record the screen. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I've never done this. This is why I'm like, Lexi. Well, actually, my first guest was my former co anchor, Brody Logan. Oh, and he Brody. dealt with me. Yes, he dealt with me on some tech issues. So we ended up recording on Zoom with no microphone. Oh, that's atrocious. Atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's going to be better. And so just so you, on this software, even though I might look blurry to you, like it's not going to look it's blurry. It's going to record. Final. Right. I figured. So yes. okay. what are we calling this big bites? Can you like explain yes. this to me? <laughs> well, that's a big, like, big question. I was wondering if- why you're not eating a burger right now. Well, I actually do have some chips. I was like stress eating when I couldn't get my um, microphone working and adapter. So Big Bites, Lexi, sister, Mm -hmm. is because the whole family, mom and dad in particular. (laughs) Linda and Bob. Linda and Bob. Ever since I started my career as a news reporter and anchor, this is going back to 2015, any time I have ever covered anything to do with food (gasps) – I cannot contain my excitement, okay? And when it comes to the point in the live show, because I believe that as long as you don't have a food allergy, like you need to taste the food Insert that you're covering. clip here. Right? Because <laughs> I'm not about to be telling the community like, oh, this is a new place. This is so good without actually biting the food. So every time as a local news reporter that I go out and cover food, I get so excited 
by the end of the live shot, when I'm about to take that big bite, I just like go ham and I just Literally. bite the biggest bite. And then I'm like trying to wrap up the live shot. I'm like, oh, oh, oh and then that, she's, I'm over there. she's giving the story. <laughs> I've seen it a hundred times. She's doing the full story with her mouth full with sauce. Right, I'm chewing it out. It's the most obnoxious thing ever, but it's oh, very, have stuff drip on me. Everything. It's very Caroline. It's so Caroline. I know it, but, it is so me because what because I love one. I've always out of anybody in this family who loves to eat the most and who's obsessed with food. You are not me. Totally. I, like you could literally care less. You're allergic to everything. Me, I can eat everything and anything, and I literally do. So mom and dad just they'll sit at dinner and like make fun of my. <laughs> here's, big here's the thing and, though, she every single like family trip, every, like from since she was a kid, she remembers the restaurants. <laughs> oh, I can tell you things I ate like at what restaurant at Disney, the name of the restaurant, what I ordered, especially like, if it was good. No one. No one will have any idea what you're talking about, and you're like, so, oh yeah, we had I. Triple quesadillas. Um, I could go for a triple quesadilla right now. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't know either, but it sounds good. But anyway, so I decided to name it Big Bites, and I went through a whole list of names. I know, and I shot podcast. a lot. I shot a few of them down, I feel like. Yeah, like, some maybe. of them were news-related. Some of them were, like, talking-related. Um, so finally, I came up with, like, I'm just going to go with Big Bites. One, because it reminds me of how mom and dad make fun of me, and I think it's hilarious. <laughs> but two, the more I started to think about it and kind of write the description for the podcast, I was like, okay, we're biting in to deeper conversations, and we want to get to know people on a bigger, better, more delicious level, right? <laughs> like, I'm here to serve up a platter of – Whatever you need. Is it career oh, advice? Is it motivation, inspiration? Like whatever it is, that's what I'm going to serve you on this five-star podcast. Okay. Love that. So that's kind of like where the name came from. And I, I just wanted it to be something crazy. I think in news, a lot of times we have to be very serious in this show. While it is going to cover some serious topics, it's going to be so fun and lighthearted and my goal is to just make everybody feel better. And I think that you're such a great person to start with, Lexi, because I feel like almost every single conversation that we have on the phone, almost, unless one of us is in a really bad mood, <laughs> could, could, literally, <laughs> could literally be turned into a podcast. <laughs> no, we should literally just record our phone calls. No, we should. And, and okay, so the reason why I'm naming our segment, because I'm making you a regular guest. You are not paid. You are doing this all voluntarily <laughs> because you love your sister. We have no budget for this show. The reason why it's going to be called Big Bites, Who's Talking with Caroline and Lexi, is because you and I talked about doing a podcast five years ago, and I'm so mad that we didn't do it. Wait, and I do, just you remember, always think do you remember sitting at the kitchen table and dad being like, you guys should start – because Caroline has always wanted to be a news anchor, side note. Yeah. Like, since she was a kid. And my dad was like, why don't you guys start a YouTube channel? And we, like, made fun of I him. know. Oh, he was a God. genius. Dad, he was a genius. Multi-million dollar idea. Ugh. And oh, we were Bob. like ah, – ah. But I do remember a throwback when you used to hang a sheet on your closet and set up an anchor table when you were a kid. And pretend like you were doing the news. So look She's at you lying. now. Well, I always say we have <laughs> like videotapes of me and some of my friends. And I would put on like a bathrobe and I would pretend to be one of the anchors on the Today Show interviewing a celebrity. And I would make them or you be the celebrity. And I would be like, how do you feel about your singing career taking off Britney Spears? You know, and mm -hmm. my friend would be playing Britney Spears, but I would be – we would watch Oprah in our house. We would watch <laughs> the Today Show a lot. My, well, my mom would. And then I'm like seeing all this. We would watch local news. So e -news I just knew. was our favorite. Oh, my E! News and TRL. Like I had that our white boxy TV in my favorite. bedroom. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh. But Lexi always wanted to be the actor, and I I'd never had an interest in that. My mom made me take some acting classes. <laughs> I always wanted to be the host or news anchor, and so no, I now, did not like the acting classes. <laughs> but okay, I was pretty good at improv, and I feel like improv, like those some of those classes that we took, like we do banter a lot on the news. So totally, it helped. totally, I you can know, totally see that. But yeah, I feel like so. You're s- Huh? Uh, you you just look so much cooler, like the way you're sitting right now. <laughs> like I just, <laughs> uh, I need to like find my vibe in here. I've always been the cooler sister for the record. Caroline would yeah. like make fun of all the things that I'm wearing. And then two years later, percent. she would yep. be wearing like when the yep. Adidas sweatsuit, like before it was a thing, I was mm-hmm. rocking the Adidas sweatsuits and Caroline's like, a thousand that, percent that looks ridiculous same with like combat boots when those were th- like before they were think and caroline's like ew what is yep. that um remember the doc martens that was yep. a huge thing mm-hmm. that you started i mean you started that trend where we're from a thousand percent you were so you were years ahead on that <laughs> you were years ahead on that dad's flannels wearing his flannels oh, i would you wear- were ahead you were ahead before everybody started wearing the flannels you were already wearing the flannels mm-hmm. tucking your shirt in was a huge thing you literally had an intervention with me like after college when i graduated in 2015 social media was a thing but it wasn't like what it is today okay and I just feel like I graduated college and started being a news reporter and kind of like lost my mojo. And you were like, mm. Caroline, start tucking your shirt. And remember like the half tuck and like mm-hmm. everything was tucked. And you had this huge intervention, like your style. I mean, honestly, I always thought you would end up working in some form of fashion, which well, you still, you actually I are because am. this is really cool. Actually, yeah. I'm wearing it right now. Oh my god! I wore, I wore this one special for you, so I'm dropping a who, new line. Who came up with that idea? Called Project Lex, and the sh- the shirt I'm wearing right now says, "I'd be a Swifty if she was still dating Calvin Harris." <laughs> And guess what? Even though I came up with that, I'm not going to make any money off of that idea or well, you anything. Know what? It's, it's a fair. I did it out of love. It's a fair trade off. I'll be your like cool guest and you don't get paid so when when we start merch for big bites and and our please just let me do the designing okay i will say can i say though i have an announcement caroline style has sky rocketed in these past few years and Thank I'm you. so proud because for a while there, I was like a little concerned. And now she's like full on, like she put me on to like good American and like. I did. Yeah. Your style is I did. on I did. fleek now. Well, well, the, the difference between you and I, like we're very similar in so many ways. And we, and we obviously sound so much alike. Like our parents can't even tell who is talking when we're on the phones. I feel like I'm maybe talking like a little more professional than I normally do right now. Like when we're both like really casual, right. like it's hard to tell us apart. So I've literally answered, I, mean, I answered the yeah. phone when your boyfriend was calling and talked to him for oh, yeah. 15 minutes mm-hmm. and he Multiple had times. no idea. I feel like my voice is a little raspy right now though. Is it? I'm just like tired because it's like way past my bedtime, but I knew that this was the only time I could lock you down to record. Yeah. But I I will say, I think that even though we're so similar, you inherently are so fashionable and you know the trends before they come out and you just have this huge style intuition. Me, I I am now, because you pushed me to be there, I basically followed a lot of fashion influencers on social media Uh, and a lot of brands that are on trends for me. And I'll admit it. I have no shame. I follow the Kardashians a lot. And like, absolutely, despite what everyone says, whatever Kim Kardashian wears is what is in style. She is working very closely with all the designers. So as soon as like I see her wear an outfit, I try to like emulate the jeans that she has. And I've finally been successful in doing that. But I have to be really up on being mindful and like looking at the trends and looking at influencers who are very stylish. And then I just emulate that. And now like I'm aware that it takes me just a little bit of effort. But I would say 
now, I mean, I'll get compliments from like high schoolers on what I'm wearing, like my mm. jeans. I try to even like with the leggings, I got to go get the ba- uh, not the baggy leggings, but the bell bottom leggings are back. Oh, you know, I have a pair of those. They're so comfy. And then everyone made fun of me for the Uggs, the Uggs slipper oh, things God. that I have, you know, the Tasmian print or yep. whatever. But like, that's like what people are wearing, the socks they that are like that. hot. So, oh, I'm very I need a trend. To- I need to have an intervention really quickly. Well, the Mom. socks are out now. Mom and I spoke about this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but I did that for Disney because it had Mickey Mouse on it. Caroline, if the socks are white, you need to be wearing white shoes. And if the oh, yeah. shoes are black, you need to be wearing the black socks. It doesn't look <laughs> I didn't bring my white shoes. I was a mess in Disney. I was like. At least I picked out cute stuff. Oh, don't but, don't ever go to Disney with Caroline. It's a nightmare. <laughs> but I agree. That was I was like I wanted to get new tennis shoes and then I didn't. But anyway, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I still love you. That's all I that matters. Didn't love the socks. But then I saw another picture of you golfing and you were doing the sock thing. And it just really and that looked cool. It wasn't working in your face. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, you guys hate the socks. <laughs> well, I should have got the bell bottom leggings. You guys would have hated the bell bottom leggings too. No, I have a pair. So of you and mom just talk behind my back. Uh, act like you and mom don't talk behind my <laughs> back. Are you kidding me? Mom tells me everything. Does she? She's like, Lexi, I understand you more than your sister does. <laughs> I know. Caroline thinks I'm absolutely crazy, but that's okay. You? Only yeah. half. Halfway crazy. Only half. Half yeah. crazy. Only half. Yes. Because I'm like the responsible one. You're like the not responsible, yeah. carefree one. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. Caroline's a Leo. I'm a Leo. But those match good together. Yeah. They do. Yeah. I think. But wait, did we – we told – okay, so back to your clothing line. What is uh-huh. your clothing line? And to explain, I came up with the saying – so oh, right. We didn't line. elaborate. So no. ba- basically, uh, I wanted to create a line for ravers and DJs that street style that, you know, um, refers to the, the, <laughs> this is my first <laughs> time explaining this. Lexi, you won it's... multiple national pageants. Come on. You have good interview skills. It's a street style brand for ravers and DJs. And I have all these cool sayings that like maybe not everyone will relate to, but if you're in that EDM scene, you'll so totally niche. relate. Yeah. yeah. It's a niche. And uh, this is my hat. So obviously my DJ name is Lexi, but with a three L three X I. So I have the fingers. This is actually my hand traced and it's on nice. a lot of the other stuff. Is that like the symbol that you want people to put up whenever yeah, you're Yeah, like a hundred million people at at uh EDC are gonna be doing that one day. Yes. Well you've DJed <laughs> at some really large scale events, venues, clubs, private events in Hollywood because mm-hmm. you she lives in Hollywood, California. So it's only um, nine something where you are. It's it's almost midnight here. The, but. the night is still young. Oh gosh! So you you've played at big venues. You've been in the scene for a while, but you're a female DJ, and I don't un- I don't think that people understand how difficult that oh. is, nor how rare it is. Yeah, there's not not a lot of us, and that's another reason why I just have to be like 10 times better because people automatically see yeah. me. Yeah. Even, even the crowd sometimes, especially in LA. Um, yeah. They'll see, oh, pretty blonde. Yeah. And think, I don't know what I'm doing. Little do they know mm-hmm. I, I'm producing. I'm, yeah. you know, I study the craft so heavily I take it very very, yeah you work very seriously you work with a lot of big producers and you get Mm -hmm. lessons and you're always working on it yeah what was that big show that you played a couple months ago I played I played beyond one fest and I Matt Stefanina's 
I I hope I'm saying that right. The dancer that I've been obsessed with like my whole life. (laughs) So it's not Stefano. I thought it was like Stefanina. Stefanina, I think. But anyway, he was super, super cool and super nice. And actually, tickets just went on sale for uh, next year's festival. So it's back yes. back in L.A. I've um, never been to a rave. I think that you would absolutely hate it. I yeah, know you. probably. I, I like having a seat. I know you. And it is just – I can see Caroline's face just standing there like – I still have Okay, haven't. but how many t- Oh no no no. Let me tell them this. Okay, so we're in Italy, right? And I'm oh, like I, I thought you were going to our Vegas 21st birthday story for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We'll I'm good with this one. one. I'm good we'll with this one. That, we'll keep that one off the podcast. So Good. Okay. We're in Italy and I'm like I got to hear some good house music, you know? So we're we go to this really cool place. It's like a local spot but it's right on the water and there's multiple <laughs> I know this multiple DJ setups and um it was a deep house music and Caroline's like uh Lexi <laughs> where's all the words why is there no words in the song I'm like Caroline it's house music <laughs> And I will never live that down. She, so it, it, that being said, and this is like a chill. I like my music with words in it. And the whole time she's like, can't they play something with words? <laughs> like, and even if they did, it would probably have been in like Italian or something. So I don't know. I don't know why I wanted the words so bad because I don't but speak Italian. Here's the thing though. Like what I, I feel like my style of DJing is I like to appear, appeal to that audience it's like because I I want to spread the genre and I got into the genre by hearing remixes of songs that I already knew and then adding a EDM element to it so I do have a lot of remixes coming out soon stay tuned but um it's it's different and you'll start to like the EDM remixes and then you'll get like into the tech house and then whatever genre future bass whatever it is so we need to take you there. You when I when I'm playing, like when I, mm-hmm. you better be there. Like the biggest show. Well, but a lot of like the shows that I've seen you play, and I am like in the DJ booth and dancing up there with you. I'm leading the party. I am like main totally. character energy. Totally. But of a course. lot of the EDM. Do we stuff expect that you play, anything differently. I know. I know. If there's a <laughs> stage, I'm on it. Um. A lot of the mixes that you play, we play them really fast, which is fun because you can dance to them in the clubs. But Mm -hmm. then you play um, some really good mixes of like hip hop, but like you make them sound EDM or like the Justin Bieber songs, you make them sound EDM. And like those are crowd pleasers. Like the crowd goes wild. Totally. Yeah. I've been at Lil John in Vegas. Oh, and he's, he's a crowd the pleaser. Best. He's a crowd pleaser. He is yeah. the best. I saw him he's, at. He's great. I mean, I scored Wait. him. A plus 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 like he literally was it was like right before Christmas time and he mixed in all I want for Christmas oh yeah and like Hakkasan was just going wild I mean he was so good so I feel like there's different like each venue each festival each thing you play kind of has like its own vibe and energy and you have to know your audience like think about Vegas okay Vegas is I'm playing in Vegas next month actually but Vegas is people from small towns from everywhere yeah they know what's on the radio Mm -hmm. you know so I'm not gonna go playing like crazy techno headbanging yeah and for you know for me personally like every time there's a new club in Vegas I feel like they play the house music with no words okay and I never ever have as much fun as I do (laughs) when I go to like the the maybe not so new club so like Hakkasan is like not like you know, like the new club. And like when I went a long time ago, a Tao, Tao or however you say it, yeah. like that was not like the new club. I had so much more fun, like not going to like the new trendy places. Every time I went to like the brand new spot, they only play house music with no words. And I had so Caroline, much more fun. Caroline, have you ever tried to move to the house music? Mm. 
It's the oh best thing God. in the world. But when, when at you, and I'll brag about you a little bit, like Lexi actually gets flown places and paid to DJ. So she's well, really a so. name in the DJ <laughs> world. So she comes and plays in Houston sometimes. And Houston is a huge rap city, but then they'll tell her no rap. But then she'll mix it with house music and like it brings the house down. Like everybody mm-hmm. goes crazy. Yeah. So I like I to love it. I like to mix it up. I like to mix it up. I love it so much. I no, want I everyone I'm sure I love your house stuff too. I want everyone to enjoy it. You know, it just depends where I'm playing where and that's the thing about like Vegas compared to like um major festivals where like if you I would not be playing the same set, you know? Yeah. So, so. when can people get your merch? Oh, it's a, literally, we just got all the finals done and it's going to be available. Maybe when are you putting this out? Maybe by the time it's out, I just finished. Really? The, yeah. I just finished a few shoots. Um, so I'm just finishing up on the edits and then boom, it'll be on oh my, my gosh. I'm going to do TikTok shop, Instagram shop. The website's ready. I just have to, you have to, you have photos. to make one that's, that's like something like if, if I rave too hard will I make the news or something like <laughs> I'll like make that. you a, cu- like, a custom Caroline. Version. Yeah. Maybe a cut someone I need a custom maybe, but I mean, I'm telling you, you're doing this merch line. Like you will definitely design the podcast merch once that time oh, comes. Totally. Totally. Yes. I love and it. So I'm bring- much. I'm bringing you some, uh, a whole influencer box on my trip. On Are you Friday. making influencer boxes? Yeah, I am. Obviously. And oh my, my box, I- have you seen my box? It has like, no the name on it it's it's really (gasps) nice Ooh, i want to make influencer packages for my friends yeah so So you're gonna be the you're you're the first influencer receiving an influencer so that's a that's a good question i love it how did you get into influencing from the news oh Uh, wait who told you to make a tiktok oh you did (laughs) where's my thank you I know, right? Um, yeah. So again, this is going back to the earlier days of TikTok when TikTok was like still newer, and, but people were starting to jump on it. This was before COVID. So this would have been like 2018, maybe. Probably 2018. I'd have to go check, but it was pretty early on. And Lexi's like, you have to start TikToking. People love these news anchors that are like doing dances. There was the one. There was the on one set. OG guy. I forget his name. But he was the one that like blew up. And people just have this like weird fascination seeing news anchors do stuff that real people do opposed to just sitting behind the the news desk. I know. I think that's why people like when like I'm going to be out live at the Houston Rodeo. And like our audience loves seeing the anchors out Uh having fun because we're just regular people obviously like everybody else. So Lexi gets me on TikTok. And I think the first video I did, I brought you into WFMJ in Youngstown, Ohio, Mm -hmm. and had you literally help me because I didn't know how to work the app. Oh, I remember that. Oh yeah. yeah. So we did that. We posted it. And then I was like, okay, I kind of like this thing. And I kind of just kept posting. And then I started eating salads in the newsroom. Oh my gosh. Yeah. God about I know of my OG followers if you're listening you'll remember and and so then I anyway I kept posting on TikTok and then you know kept posting on Instagram you actually even at my first job in 2015 my Instagram wasn't public you're like Caroline make your Instagram public like what are you doing it was private because our requirements were only Facebook back in 2015 I remember doing the first Facebook live for the station that I worked at at that time WJET and Jet 24 Action News in Erie. So anyway, like I, I've really like come up through the evolution of like hardcore social media, you know, like my field has changed a lot in the last right. several years. So anyway, I'm at WFMJ and in 2017, which is when you told me like TikTok is huge. It's going to It like, took me a while. I had, to, I had to nag you for a bit. You did. Start and you kept it. on me. Yes. And so then I decided because I could see where technology and social media was going. My mom got a pamphlet in the mail from Point Park University <laughs> that was like, <laughs> I know, master's degree in communication technology with a social media specialization. 
So because I, I had moved home from Erie, Pennsylvania, where I was a reporter at Jet, and I moved home and moved back in with my parents, and I was weekend anchor and weekday reporter at WFMJ in Youngstown, Ohio. We are from West Middlesex, Pennsylvania. It was like a 20-minute drive, but like that's super normal for people to like do that commute. There's not much traffic, and it was easy. There's and super no nice living at traffic. Home. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I love Youngstown so much. But anyway, so while I'm full-time, while I'm full – time careering I apply yeah I mom like handed me the pamphlet and then one day I was like yeah "Yeah, I applied for grad school and I got accepted and I'm doing this thing and it was mostly online I did do a couple classes down at Point Park University (sighs) which is like an hour 15 minute drive you would go once yeah it is and side note, I did my undergraduate degree there and I had a full ride for golf. I, I played on the tell, women's I golf gonna, team. I was going to tell them that. So Yes. Yeah, so that's like yeah. side note. So I love, yes, I loved Point Park University already and they have always been just really on the cutting edge of technology and they are so good about changing their curriculum and updating it every single year. So the classes that I took in undergrad completely have evolved and changed Mm -hmm. like and have molded to reflect what my career is in broadcast journalism now same thing with my master's degree I mean they're changing they're updating all the time so anyway I just saw and my mom saw how important social media and technology was becoming in my field and how the traditional local news was probably going to look a whole lot different one day and so I enrolled, I graduated in 2019 with my master's degree in communication technology with a social media specialization. And I can tell you right now that played a huge, huge, huge role in me realizing what it takes to literally blow your social media up. And while, you know, a lot of it was just being persistent and not giving up and literally posting day after day after day after day, not missing a day for like over a year. A lot of things that I learned in grad school directly applied, like what words I'm using in the post, Mm -hmm. um, SEO optimization, all that. Like I even had to do a web design class and oh my gosh, so much. So anyway, I pretty much applied all that to what I'm doing now. And that's basically how I knew that if I wanted to succeed on these platforms, like I had the formula. So then I moved in the middle of COVID from Youngstown, Ohio, (laughs) all the way to Fresno, Fresno, California. Fresno, California. Yes. I loved it because she was three hours away from LA so we could make trips. I knew nobody in Fresno. All I knew was my sister that was three hours away. Literally, that's the only person I knew. Moved to Fresno and I start working at KC24. I literally like went through a breakup that, uh, with a guy oh, for like three years. Who and, like, I couldn't Lex- stand. Lexi, stop. <laughs> I'm trying not to edit this podcast. Stop. He knows that. It's not a secret. Oh my gosh. Anyway, continuing. <laughs> so I was like, go. oh, and I had had that heart problem from having COVID, mm-hmm. which I, was, was so, so bad. bad. That's like a whole episode on its own. I was hospitalized. I have pericarditis. It still bothers me to this day. This is middle of 2020. Moved to Fresno. Don't know anybody. My dad drives with me across the country. I'm in all this pain from my pericarditis. Okay, can I just anyway. add in when I moved – to New York City the day I graduated high school. No one helped me. And then when I moved across the country to Los Angeles, also no one helped me. My family just you're like just a very what? You're just a very like you're doing it yourself. You're good. When like, Caroline moves, oh the whole family gets involved. <laughs> Everyone donates their furniture. <laughs> Not me. Oh my. Not me. Because you did things so fast and like just so abruptly, like how could we even like you know? I mean, you're just I was, like I three, three days. Okay, we'll get to that point in a minute. So okay, keep remind going. Me, we're going back to that. So anyway, I was sitting on my apartment floor. I was making, I was making TikToks and they were doing well, and I'm growing, growing, growing. My co-anchor Brody Logan, hilarious, oh, and everyone loved him on there. So then this thing called Instagram Reels dropped and I was sitting on my apartment floor one day and I was just like, I'm so bored with Instagram. I'm going to start this Reels thing. And literally the Reels blew up. I didn't miss a day for over a year posting Reels. Brody was in them and that just blew my Instagram up. And then TikTok started to blow up again. Um, So basically I got tired of making videos where like my voice wasn't being heard because 
my favorite thing to do is to talk. tell stories and to talk. And so I'm like, okay, I see all these other influencers <laughs> just like doing days in a life and they're literally doing nothing. I'm like, <laughs> I love them. They're like, let me go walk my dog. This not. I'm like, I actually have this crazy life in local news. Like, let me start showing it. So one day I just decided to vlog my morning and I like showed myself waking up in the middle of the night and getting ready for the news and everything. And I think that one got like 30 million views and like 5 million likes or something. I don't know. It's crazy. literally then, like waking up at 2.30 a.m. to be on yeah, the morning news. I know. So now it's kind of just taken off. So and were you there. nervous? Were you nervous when you switched jobs and you were then an evening news anchor? Were you like, oh my gosh, I have to come up with new ideas because I – lost my niche because I'm not waking up at 2 a.m. anymore? Well, I think my niche was really get ready with me. And while people do miss the early mornings, like guess what's paying majority of my bills and my lifestyle? The job that I have now at Fox 26 Houston. So you can't get caught up on only focusing on views and likes because if you just keep posting and you stay consistent, I've had plenty of videos do really well here at Fox 26. And guess what? That's great. But at the end of the day, what's paying my bills and what's keeping me alive in this amazing place that I live in is Fox 26. You know? Right. So it's like that has always been my goal is to be a broadcast journalist and to make a difference in the communities that I'm working. And I love interviewing people. I feel very weird even like answering these questions to you knowing that this is like going to go out in a story form as a podcast you know because I like to be the ones asking questions so uh, yeah I was like okay you know we'll see my engagement was so high on my TikToks at um when I was in Fresno and that was amazing but you know life changes and this is really what's going to benefit me in the long run so roll with the punches you just got to roll with it. So, you know, it is what it is. I miss, honestly, I miss working with Brody the most. Like, yeah, our mm. videos are funny, but like, I really do miss working with him. He was so fun. So anyway, now we just keep on rolling. But I well, want Rashi, Rashi is awesome too, though. You you have another amazing Oh my gosh. Right? Yes, Rashi is. I've been so blessed. Rashi's, we'll have Rashi. Rashi's going to come on the podcast oh, for sure. Yeah, I need to figure out how to shoot in person, but I'll probably have her do remote as well. But well, you guys, though, like, you guys have then. a new a new segment that's on the Fox Local app, right? You and Rashi. Yeah, it's so, called Caroline and Rashi. We launched a show, and we're yeah, I'll bring her on. We'll talk about that and where you can watch, and yeah, it's really cool. So one thing I wanted to bring up is my generation, because I'm what four years younger than you. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you're see really like, you're really like four five, and a half, you're yeah. five grades, four and yeah. a half years. So yeah. I do not see a lot of my friends watching local news. Um, like we yeah. get, we get our news yep. through like social media and stuff. So I feel like with you being on social media is bringing more awareness to the news and maybe drawing in like younger viewers. Yeah. But do you and I'm trying to share more news on social media. Um, but really what I've found that people really like to know is breaking news updates. And that's sometimes challenging to get out on my TikTok and everything. Like, sure, I can write a tweet, but like my TikTok audience, especially, like they want to know breaking news. But it's very challenging to be live on air or live because now we stream. So if there's breaking news, we're live like at all times and dealing with all that, plus posting on social media like in real time that's well, there, crazy there was one that you did that got a lot of attention and I forget what yeah. story it was but I think there was it, like a guy it was like a standoff and yeah, it was, it I mean, was, it was crazy really and then also like other just like interesting things that are dangerous like the Panera lemonade one like that one really did well but I just try not to focus on like what video did well what did it because you right. literally don't know like you could, I could post a video of me doing nothing and it could like blow up. Mm -hmm. I'm not even zero, you. zero so, effort content. And then the, blows yeah. Up and guess what? Sometimes. Guess what? I don't delete or hide likes on videos that get barely any likes or views because I want to show people that even somebody with 1.6 million followers and however many hundreds of thousands mm. followers on Instagram, it doesn't matter. Does it make me less of a journalist? Does it make me less of a person? Does it make me less worthy? No. It literally, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. All that matters is that I'm doing something that I enjoy, which is posting content on social media 
and just letting it be. So, <laughs> you know, you, so many people delete. If you had to choose between going full entertainment news or going full like investigative journalist, which would you choose? <laughs> Okay, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> you know, I feel like I really thrived at general assignment. And that's like when you're covering everything that's going on in the community from really fun things to really tragic stories from some pieces that you might investigate to breaking news to, I mean, literally, you're covering everything. And I know that maybe a lot of people in my field, they want to create a brand and be like, I'm the investigative journalist. Right. I'm the lifestyle and entertainment journalist. I'm the crime reporter. I'm, you know, the whatever, whatever. But like, honestly, and truly, I am really good at reporting on breaking news. I am really good at investigating things. And I'm also really freaking good at doing fun things like so eating when I food rodeo, on camera yes like I will slay that all day so I th part of why I wanted to start this podcast Lexi is because we are so often put in a box and mm. sure that is part of branding and starting a brand but I truly believe that I can have fun on TikTok and I can cover a serious story and vice versa I can mm -hmm. post a serious story on TikTok but I can also post a fun story on TikTok. I can go out and do a breaking news. It's devastating live shots on air. I mean, on air nonstop, just like things are changing and it's crazy and things are burning or whatever and blowing up. And I mean, it's chaotic. I will do just as well on that live shot as I will right. at Rodeo Cook-Off mm -hmm. when I know, I know I do good on those live shots. And I so, feel like that gives kind of like the viewer kind of gets to know you and trusts you more almost when you yeah, have a, I just, a wide range. It totally. It's so like acting really when I, I you know, I just did a horror film and then I've done like super serious stuff or yeah. comedy, you know? So it's like. No, I love that. You can't put yourself in a box. Um, you can't. And that's really what this podcast is supposed to be all about is showing that you literally are more than what everybody labels you. I can be a TikToker, a podcaster, a journalist and a content creator. That's okay. And it's like just pushing the boundaries to finally get people to wake up and realize that it's better. It's better to be a multitude of things instead you, of just like one thing. And you get people, oh, like, I know this is like a common thing for acting and even DJing sometimes like, oh, silly videos online, you won't yeah. be taken seriously. I think that that is totally outdated. Yeah. It is 2024. Very, very, outdated. very outdated. I mean, Agree. to take what your focus is and put it out there to have more of a reach like that yeah. just makes sense. So I don't like that point of view that yeah, the old I, I feel like it's the older generations have that. It is, yeah, for sure. And that's like totally what I'm trying to change. And I I wish that I would have wrote down what I was supposed to ask you about. Do you remember? Uh, I said we'll come back to that. And oh. I don't remember. It was about you. Oh, moving oh, to New York. Was it your acting? Was it oh, mo moving, moving to, well, to New York? We, well, Oh yeah, I think it was because okay. I said no there, one helped me. To. Okay. Well, no one helped you, but also literally three days after she graduated high school, boom, she was off to New York City and was just figuring it out. It was crazy. One luggage on a on the mega bus, baby. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was insane. And you moved there and you started school and you online. Just I did all grinded. online. Yeah, and then so you then moved to audition. LA literally a year later, you just moved to LA and figured it out. Like, I can't imagine the first time I went to LA to visit you pretty early on after your first move. Okay. How fun was that? Oh, like, so I was like, we I went boating. wait, here. no, I don't think that was the trip that we went boating three days in a row, but my favorite trip was when we went boating three days in a row. Oh yeah. That was, <laughs> that was probably, was that the second time I came back? Yeah. I think? It that was, was towards the then beginning. In, yeah. Yeah. That was, it was, it was actually COVID and I had just recovered. And then mm -hmm. I 
um, yeah, I came out to see you because you were in need of some family because that was a difficult time. But then we ended Life up can be on a yacht. Kind of depressing. <laughs> it totally we ended up, me up. We ended up yachting and boating in Marina Del Rey in Newport Beach. So, so it was it was pretty fun. fun. So yeah, fun. that was so that was really fun. That was so fun. Um, but yeah, it's crazy how you've been able to move and just do so well at such a young age and get into these careers. Like we never thought you'd be a DJ and oh, everything you do, I, you, you just do it told, so well. If you would have told me that like DJing would be my life now, I'd look at you like you're crazy, but it's just it's funny. I, I just, I don't know. It Like I found my purpose in life. I mean, obviously I have two major passions and that's yeah acting and film and music and, and DJing. So that one came yeah. out of nowhere, which is I so know, cool. So it's, it doesn't matter how old you are. Like if you find something that you feel called to, like just follow it. You yeah. Know? But one thing about you is everything you do, you do so well, especially if you're interested in it. You're so good at acting and you just – filmed a movie and you're auditioning all the time and you are booking and that's I mean that's crazy like so many people dream of moving to Hollywood and Los Angeles to do what you're doing mm -hmm. yeah I mean I've wanted this like how you've wanted you've known you wanted to do broadcasting since you were younger I've known that this is what I wanted mm -hmm. to do um but yeah no, I know I remember coming to LA for when we were in pageants and like, yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, and you going... would win. You won every pageant. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't care. I just <laughs> unbelievable. No, was, because you had you were I watching was a good, me. I was a good actor too. So I after I would win, they you were, <laughs> but you after also were win, watching. Me. I was watching Caroline. I, I watched Caroline in her pageants, and then next next year I got to participate. Boom! Just from watching you, Fine. and that's why I'm... because you were you were competing at five years advanced from your age basically mm -hmm. like you're yeah. in your age group but you're competing Same with like dance you it's been like group. that with a lot of things yep. because of you like I was always the youngest one in my dance groups growing up yep. because I would watch Caroline and I would be and like, you would get literally ahead. moved up to my group like it yeah. like, literally they'd be like <laughs> okay we have to move her up because she's so good so everything she does even her while I'm Caroline's I way better at golf than more. me but your swing is better than my swing. And it's crazy. Like I, you're just so good at whatever you that. set your mind to. Like it's so crazy. It really is. And you're an amazing DJ, a great actor. And I mean, I just can't wait to see what's next. I think that your clothing line is going to explode. I, I think there's a good niche audience. So for excited. It. And, and I also have stuff even just like one of my t-shirts is a cell phone that says play Taylor Swift. Because yeah, at, yes. at the raves, they hold up like a phone and on they go on their Snapchat and hold it up to the DJ. And when I'm playing, people will do this too. They'll be like, play Bad Bunny or play this, play that, like trying to request a song, holding up their, their cell phones in the crowd like this. So that's what this, one of the shirts is that oh my gosh. you're going to love. And it says, play Taylor Swift. I love, love that. Swift drop yeah, <laughs> I love that. Maybe I can link to those on my website. I can talk For to Luke sure. about that. For sure. Things are in the work with that. So yeah, I feel like this is going to be a regular segment. I thought that this was really fun talking to you. This was fun. It was so much fun. Thank and you we had such good conversations. Me. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Even though you're I can't wait to see. sometimes. <laughs> just kidding oh, when I can't get my microphone just working kidding. Lexi's like if you're no gonna joke. be a brat <laughs> I said if you're gonna be a brat I'm not doing it <laughs> I was like, don't say don't say what you really said I don't I don't want to I don't know how to beep things out yet <laughs> well she was trying to get the mic working and she was annoyed hey you just went about 48 minutes with no swear words congratulations <laughs> round of applause so you can do it you, you know i it. did try really hard <laughs> you did great thank because you because i'm like lexi we have to record this like we are live on tv because i 
do I, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't have time to mess with like editing and stuff. So minimal and editing here. No budget. So you know what? This DIY, baby. <laughs> DIY. I don't even know how to upload this to any podcasting platforms yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to figure that out. Well, you do your research before you go to bed and you make oh it to your, gosh. you make it to your 9am workout class in the morning. Well, there's, there's so much more we can talk about so for the next episode. You, you have a severe gluten allergy. So when I was booking our restaurants, <laughs> I, I love that that's tonight. the next topic of the podcast. Lexi's severe gluten allergy. <laughs> It is severe though. Like it's not funny. Oh, the stuff that's happened to her because of her allergy is crazy. Anyway, I checked the restaurants. They have gluten free for you when Woo. you're coming here soon. I'll I know. And so we can talk you. about that. And then we'll film in when person. Just, I don't have two microphones. I have one right in front of me, Caroline. I can fit this fits in my luggage. Do you think if you brought your laptop, we could sync cameras caroline what would be the point if we would be sitting right next to each other <laughs> <laughs> to get the solo shot on each one of us and then the middle shot oh yeah for sure yeah i, I don't know well, that sounds complicated oh don't be lazy i don't think we're gonna do you think that we're gonna have time to record yeah we'll do it before the I Radio. feel like all the time we're like, let's make our Instagram real. We don't even have time to do that. <laughs> well, I, I already have our real planned out though. I got it all figured out. Let's have mom on the podcast. I already asked her and she said she'd have to take a Xanax or something. <laughs> I'm, not nervous. I'm like, what? <laughs> mom, at this point, I have zero viewers. Why would you be nervous? That's, that's a whole other topic. It's the reality shows that I've dragged our mother on. Oh, and, and also another, like, we haven't even talked about how our parents literally hate the spotlight, hate the camera, hate and then talking in front of us. people. They have, like, the softest voices. They don't, they're not super loud. Like, oh my gosh. They're I don't always, know, like, I don't know where we came from. Like, we're, well, this is why I want to have mom on because I think that they were so shy. They wanted us to be outgoing. Look, but I think we were like, I think we came out of mom like ready really, for the microphone. Yeah. I think that we're going to give mom a margarita and make her come on the podcast. I already said I need to get margaritas, espresso martinis, yes. and I'm actually going to make, well, I always make Moscow mules. That's like, I always mm, have I mules in my house. They're so those. easy because you can even just keep lime juice in your fridge, but I like the fresh limes if I can like, you know, right. get those. And then I want to make, these um LaCroix has this new like mojito flavor and I want to make like a healthy mojito with some fresh mint oh or even if we did not the rum and the I don't know I'll mess around with it but I, I was like, yeah I sometimes have, get like yeah. I I get my I'm a tequila drinker you're a vodka drinker I get my drinks yeah. like espresso martini with tequila reposado uh Moscow yeah. mule with tequila like you could do anything with with ever yes whatever you prefer and just in case anybody literally is wondering my sister is well beyond 21 and so am oh. i so just putting that out there like we are we are well into our well i'm 30 and then lexi's younger than me but she's definitely over 21 yeah yeah <laughs> drink drink responsibly but i think it's kind of fun to net like i'm into it's kind of a new thing crafting drinks uh -huh. at my place i think it's because i live in such a great place and like I'm just having fun having people over and like making drinks. Right. It's like, on, it's a new kind of like, thing I'm into. On Christmas, on Christmas morning. Yes, we did like, that was we so had, fun. Caroline was killing it with it. She had a whole little bar oh. set up with like ca crushed candy canes on the rim. Well, mom helped a lot. It mom was so really kind of set it up. I was just making the drinks. Mm. I credit her with that. I think next year we need to bring up the card table for like a bar. Oh, okay. And we need to order the appropriate, like the mixers and the shakers. I have all that. So I have all that. I have it too. And okay. We'll get mom that. We'll get mom oh, that. Oh, it'll like, be a gift. Or mom and dad for like Father's Day. We could send Perfect. dad like. Perfect. Yeah, then we'll have it all. Okay, <laughs> Dad. All right. You know your gift now. And all right, Lexi. no one's going to use it but us. But I know. Thank you for having me. I'm I could talk to you. So excited to see where this podcast goes. Congrats. Oh my gosh. 
Thanks, Lex. I love you. Thank love you for you. encouraging me. I wish that we would have done our Who's Talking podcast a long time ago. I'm glad <laughs> that you take that on my show now. Perfect. And we'll see where that goes. So Perfect. this was so much fun. It's like, because I felt like I haven't like talked, talked to you. We talk mostly every we day, talk but every not, day, but yeah. She's on break from work. I'm running. Yeah. To, yeah it's just quick. So this is It's kind of quick. Or sometimes we'll miss each other. Uh-huh. You know, we're playing phone tag. So this was like a way that we can actually spend one hour talking, even though it's after my full day at work. And <laughs> it's like, I got to catch up with my sister. So I love that. Love that. Love you. All right. Bye. Love, love you. Thanks Bye. for watching guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on Big Bites. Make sure to like and subscribe to the podcast so I can keep these inspirational and motivating conversations going. I love having you here. And remember, you deserve a seat at the table.